right, what is going on, guys? It's Adam, a.k.a. Marf, and this is Marfugal TV. So this is something we actually covered at the after the 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 event of the huge, massive 7.4 earthquake that hit Taiwan, that sent uh, towers of Taiwan into leaning towers of Pisa. Uh, there was rumored news, and we did cover it. We were actually some of, among the first uh, to cover it, uh, along with uh, Raw's alert. In fact, that's where we got it. Uh, which was that Taiwan was being surrounded right after this and around this time period. And now I guess we got some verification. Uh, it, it again says that China sends warplanes boats around Taiwan following phone call between Xi and our president JB. Now, of course, they're leaving out there that it's, it's basically saying that it was around this call with JB, uh, but you kind of had a 7.4 earthquake and you had all of these uh, surrounding planes and vessels. It says dozens of Chinese warplanes and multiple naval ships were reported around the island of Taiwan this week, the largest coordinated display this year. At least 30 planes and nine ships were detected in Taiwan's air defense identification zone. So that is the exact number that we covered before any main, uh, mainstream media covered it, other than Indian uh, Times Now. Uh, so, again, it's crazy how long it took everybody else to get to that uh, as far as the rest of the American Western media. So, it, if this is verified and that this happened, it's like as this earthquake's going on, you've got the Chinese military surrounding them. I also think about the kind of technologies that they've been working on and the balloons and the different electronic warfare stuff they've been doing and the Neurostrike technology. And I'm just wondering all sorts of things about, you know, just in general, what they would be capable of doing. Heck, people wonder about Japan and other events. What do you think? Again, we'll talk about this and much, much more on tonight's episode of Marfugal TV. So don't go anywhere. It's going to be a good one. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I uh, can't say thank you enough. All right. So uh, again, today, a uh, big chunk of our day, would, this is going to be a very compact show because we're going over pretty much the creme de la creme of the major events over the last 24 hours. There won't be much filler at all in this show. Uh, and again, I don't feel that any of our shows really have filler, but we do cover technology, different, uh, you know, different uh, uh, fires and big events and, and uh, disasters worldwide and things like that. Uh, those are things that, uh, you know, we cover even small events if they have relevance. Uh, but tonight it's going to be pretty compact. And that is because we actually filmed a, uh, a guest episode. So that will be airing quite soon. Uh, hopefully it will be airing uh, in the next few days. So that was really fun. We had a great guest. We'll surprise you in a couple of days with that. Uh, but let's bring in my co slash internet brother, Dex James. What is going on and how are you doing today? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugal fam. I'm doing just fine. So, f first of all, the it, it, it's kind of, I guess at the time, after this huge, huge earthquake, you have uh, essentially China surrounding them. 
Now, if they knew the earthquake was happening, that would be pretty bad. But like I said the, yesterday, is I said, well, if this was a normal day, that would be kind of normal, right? If if no earthquake was happening, if you had 30 warplanes and nine vessels around it, it wouldn't really uh, make anybody scratch your head because they've been doing it day after day. <clears throat> what made people really weird about this is the, the fact that it was reported that they came as it was going on and, and they even knew about it and they even got closer. Like they traveled there to surround it. So it made people think like, was this a scare tactic to make Taiwan think like, oh my gosh, they're going to use this as a uh, an advantage and, and come on in? Like it was, uh, was kind of crazy there for a couple hours yesterday because if this was true, it, it was pretty wild. Uh, we were not able to verify it. It said several reports yesterday. Uh, but now I guess we were. So, uh, but Dex, I, I guess it's not like war gets a pause button, right? If they go through a natural disaster, there has been times in the past where they've kind of paused war while people gather their stuff. This was a pretty bad earthquake. The The toll wasn't bad as far as loss of life, uh, but the videos out of it are absolutely crazy. A 7.4, it was massive. Well, and, and the other question, I know it's on a lot of people's minds, and we, we hinted to the fact that they have talked about, when I say they, the powers of the world, have talked about having capabilities to make these unnatural uh, disasters, not just natural. So um, that sort of plays into the big question. And one of the things I know you and I had talked about was like, yeah, this was massive. It was huge. But I said it was also in the perfect spot. In other words, the perfect spot to... Uh, put a large to have a large earthquake happen but have the uh, you know the biggest amount of effect where people will feel it but not necessarily the maximum amount of damage whereas if it was on the other side of the island or the north side of the island um near taipei it would probably be a totally different scenario it would probably just be one of these big massive disasters that we hear about now mind you i think they also you know are much more protected uh, from uh, earth quakes there than maybe other countries kind of like japan was but still i think it could have been a much different scenario and i think a lot of people you know wonder was it you know and the fact that those ships were moving in so quickly was that part of part of a practice was that part of a warning or was that just coincidence and poor timing on china's part so I, I, within five minutes of the earthquake, I posted, I said, uh, massive 7.4 in, ta uh, in Taiwan. And I said, the timing is insane. <clears throat> Somebody posted, uh, here comes the, the tin hats, right? You know, oh, here comes the tin hats. I wasn't actually, I was more saying the timing of this, t all that Taiwan's going through, uh, the timing of this is is pretty bad. I mean, if they are expecting some sort of invasion at some point, if you go through a massive earthquake, it might be pretty easy to, to roll right in if everything's already crumbling. Uh, the, the On the other hand, like w the damage that was done, you know, like you said, like Japan, it's probably really good. Uh, the buildings are built to a certain standard, like they're prepared a lot more than other places. It seemed to me like it was the opposite. Like, I... I a 7.4 is big, uh, but I was surprised to see so many newer, big buildings that are now leaning towers of Taiwan. Like, uh, usually if they have the proper uh, equipment down below, they have like a moving base. This is how Japan skyscrapers survived and, in fact, just kind of wobbled around, is they were meant, as it's shaking, they're on kind of this... Uh, this base that moves around. So as it shakes this way... It, it's kind of like, um, I, I don't, like if you put a, a, a tower of Jenga on top of a huge jello block and then shook the, sh shook the plate of jello, the jello is going to move and maybe the, you know, the Jenga blocks wouldn't topple because it absorbs all of the, the shaking. But as far as the, how they moved in, the, the types of planes, like I wonder, was there a special plane in this, like some experimental plane? Some would look at that as crazy. But when you look at what current technology can do, when you look at different things that they can do with explosives, I, I guess I think it's crazy not to ask questions, especially with the timing of all of it.
Uh, Dex, go ahead. Well, and you, when I say this, you know the experimental place that's up in Alaska, right? That we all talked about for years. The night Begins before. With an H. The yeah. night before this happened, I I covered the Eric Speckler and the uh, mm -hmm. the so Sean Ryan a interview. Of, a lot of people were talking about online that one of those systems was actually turned up in um, Taiwan. Now I can't confirm that other than the chatter. But a lot of people are, are talking about that. So that's just one of the other things that's going around, which is fueling this type of conversation and why it's happening. Yeah. And of course, you, there's a lot of this kind of stuff that we'll never know the the complete truth around. Right. It, 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 there's a lot of uh, covering of tracks and and pushing under the rug of of things like that. If they are happening. I mean, obviously, you know, Hollywood has talked about kind of the the black files or the 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 project x kind of things that happen that stay at somewhere like area 51 in some sort of vault uh, we've seen that the x file type thing um and uh you know i bet there's stuff like this happening all the time that we don't know about that's just my my opinion but what's yours let me know in the comments down below and then Texas, Calmaine Foods, largest producer of eggs in the U.S., finds the cough cough in chickens at the Texas plant. Uh, now, this is this is a freaky story because obviously, yeah, nobody wants to go through what we already went through and say if something like this got bad and it was actually bad, like bad, bad. We were just talking about this three days ago, or the the same day. I actually maybe it was the same day we were talking about the Eric, Eric Speckler and the Sean Ryan interview with the guy that said he held the keys to this Antarctica facility. All that the same night, was talking about how you know what if we the the fact that now after the CV and all of that stuff, people are not as afraid of it. It it actually had a. a different effect like a lot of people are like yeah whatever it's not it's not as bad as they say but if we did get a really bad event we talked about uh, antibiotic resistant bugs and the super gonorrhea that's coming out of china that's anti uh, antibiotic resistant and we talked about like when if a real bad one happens like an ebola type thing uh uh you know face melting kind of stuff or something like that something like out of the movie outbreak that would be a, a scary thing those exist those are real things uh we've had you know these break out in uh in the past so those are the kind of scary things that people worry about uh dex as far as calmaine foods it seems like almost yeah. every part of our production or infrastructure some part of it is getting just these unfortunate events like we're lemony snickets live or something well monday we were talking about it and we were talking about it on a monday because we we're talking about a dairy farmer who contracted it it was the first uh, human contraction in the u.s and it was in texas and they got it from the cows and the fact that it was in the cows was a big deal but it wasn't that big of a deal according to the fda and others because the cows were able to recover and they just needed uh, you know a little time to have some R&R &R, and then they were fine and they didn't say anything would happen except for a little bit of milk reduction uh in as far as their production so it was sort of like don't worry about it food's fine but what what also was happening at the same time was oh by the way it went to the cows from the birds but it's still in the birds and apparently now it's hit the birds in Texas as well in this case the chickens uh which is you know pulling an entire chicken farm offline um and we're going to see, I have a sneaking suspicion, we're going to see again the, you know, the chicken wing scare again, if you want to call it that or whatever it was, where we're going to have a shortage on this. They're going to have to stop. Uh, they're going to pull back, whether it be eggs or, or start culling chickens if this outbreak continues uh, to expand. And that'll have an issue or that'll have an effect on, on all of us. Because we're already, it's not like we're getting great deals in the grocery store right now. We're already, you know, paying for the, the cost of two people to feed one. So when chicken and eggs go up, that's just going to be more of a burden on the American public. Now, we just spoke with a guest. I'll leave that still as a surprise. But they made a comment about that 70% of Americans, and this I don't know if this was paraphrased, but I believe it's, it's close to accurate, 
Uh, 70% of Americans are one or two paychecks away from being homeless. Uh, now, I don't know what the actual stats are on that, but I have heard very similar stats uh, like that in the in the past, that most people are living paycheck to paycheck, and there's the old saying, we're, you know, you're, you're always, you could be one paycheck away from being homeless, right? As far as eggs and milk and some of the essentials that have gone up and up and up that everybody talks about, it's in every news broadcast, all of that, because these are things that everybody has either eaten or is a staple, things that they get all the time that's part of their regular diet. It is just skyrocketed. This is, of course, making the price higher. Uh, meanwhile, it's not like everybody's wages are skyrocketing, too. Everybody is getting just squeezed and squeezed and squeezed to one of the most trending videos all over any platform is videos of people going, I just can't handle it now. It's so hard. How do people live like this? There's thousands and thousands coming out every day. Different people sitting in their car going, I just don't get it. People crying, saying, I don't know how I can afford. I can't afford rent, this, that, insurance. I don't have health insurance. I don't have this. I don't have that. And it's like it's it's almost like we are they are trying to get as many people as possible to the point where if we are even down for a week, that everybody's going to collapse. Like it's just going to be chaos uh, when how are you going to prep? How are people going to prep for a coming world war or prep for this when they can't even afford to keep their fridge stocked for this week, let alone for three months out? It seems like this is a war strategy. I, what does it seem like to you? I would love to hear your opinion. Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, by the way, thank you. Big thank you to JA98470 for the super thanks on On the Brink Everywhere on the last show. Thank you about four hours ago. Thank you for the super thanks. I appreciate that. It's like a super chat for older shows. And then Peter Souza and... Access Q. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, Brett Butler, Sweatin' Ministries. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Uh, Lavender Lattes. Thank you for your support this week, and I appreciate uh, you supporting Independent. Okay, and then, yeah, yeah are we going to have another Cat Williams special? We've just talked about this. Like, there was a wing shortage, but somehow there wasn't a thigh shortage. Somebody's bad at math, but whatever. And then local meteorologists left in the dark during an NWS radar outage. So I actually got pictures earlier during the storms yesterday. Uh, Wages was sending me these crazy, crazy uh, radar photos. And some of them had some very sus uh, kind of, I guess, objects in, in them, right? Uh, some weird stuff. And it's kind of crazy because during these storms, there was a lot of uh, odd things that went down, like the actual radar went blank for a minute. Now, some actually said that they believe during this outage that something may have happened or, you know, well, I guess we'll never know. But uh, some even have a side theory that maybe it was done because they were doing something up there for a uh, period of time and. They basically shut off the surveillance camera, if you get my meaning. Uh, Dex, this was yeah. This was uh, you experienced the storm. We were talking well, about it last night. Or well, the there night was before. two rounds of storms. So there was one that went through Monday night, and um, then there was one that went through last night that I was part of. Um, the one that went through Monday night, Monday into uh, Tuesday, um, is where they. This was the one that was going through St. Louis. It was going up through the Midwest. It was massive. Uh, it was the one everybody was worried about. That's the one where the the next red systems went down. They were gone. They went offline, uh, which was sort of unfortunate at that time because it's a time in which you need it. Um, and as this this article is really covering it from a weather point of view, saying you know local meteorologists were left in the dark during the NWS outage, which is true. Then last night, um, which is the one I went through, was a different one. Um, I don't know. I think some of the images that we got from wages showed some strangeness in the way the radars were working. As he said it, they were leaving signatures behind, which they didn't typically do. Uh, they were taking a long time to fade away, which was uh, showing an indication of, of a, something that they were doing differently. So I don't know if that's an effect from the outage they had before. 
the big question is why the outage? And what look were at they, it. Look yeah, at and what all were they of hiding? the red. What were they hiding or what did someone do to them? One of those two questions is what I'm asking because I can't imagine somebody was doing a configuration update in a server file somewhere that caused an outage across all the massive weather systems during the middle of the one of the biggest weather events that everybody was worried about. They would never do something like that. So something else happened. Either it was intentional or someone went after the system. Now, this is something. Look at this. Yeah, you Compare it, right? <laughs> uh, this is uh, this is more closer to operating normal, right? Green, 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 green. What the heck happened here? This looks like a like a Where's Waldo or something. So, it, mind you, imagine the effect if there are in the future they know that serious serious things are coming. If there are uh, hurricanes or s some sort of created anything uh, imagine all of these go down because of a cyber event how would you warn how would you know where it's going you wouldn't be able to evacuate certain places if you know that something is coming to that area they can usually track and let people know before the storm gets to them I mean they can track lightning in different things to certain extent to where they can tell you like hey seek shelter if there's no uh, radars to warn them, you could have a huge disaster. Uh, maybe this these storms over the last couple days weren't uh, the craziest things, but think about even worse storms happening and all of the radars go down. Uh, was this some sort of test run? It's very creepy. Uh, what is the explanation? What is the official explanation of it, right? Are they going to say it was an update? Before we move on, make sure to go check out EMP Shield. Again, with all of the craziness going on, one of the big things that is being talked about in nonstop is now EMP. And now everybody's catching up uh, that EMP is one of the most, uh, well, I guess, preferred way to attack the United States. The reason why is it doesn't actually take uh, directly any lives. It actually knocks down our system to let us do all the work. Uh, once you knock out a power grid, then you lose all power, you lose all water supplies, you lose everything. You lose gas pumps, you, you lose your entire infrastructure once the power goes down. As far as an EMP, it would happen in multiple strikes. It would be in pulses. This can protect you against all of them. And it can prevent against solar events, which were also in Solar Cycle 25, which is happening to line up with all of these world conflicts. Uh, it is also... Uh, at the peak uh, in 2024 into 2025. We're already dealing with flare after flare. If you want to protect yourself and feel at ease, then make sure to go over to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Get yourself protected. Wire it into your car in a couple minutes, and then you are protected. Now, I did uh, I did want to... Sh Dex, can you read that? Te so there's a Fugal family member, and you guys can talk. Uh, I believe if, if they're in chat, they can pop in, but... Will you read the testimony that we just got from a Fugle family member? Because it's pretty freaking awesome. I I was going to pull it up. I'll, I can try to pull up the, the the comment here. Yeah, I've got it. It's from uh, Eric, a, either Erica Norton or Eric A. Norton, but probably Erica, uh, Norton 71. It's, a, this, it's an EMP shield testimony. I bought... Uh, the least expensive model they were selling, and my husband, a master electrician, begrudgingly installed it. He thought it was total BS. Fast forward to our house being struck by lightning on Tuesday. The EMP shield is toast, which, by the way, it's supposed to be with the direct hit. Um, we lost uh, an air compressor, a coffee grinder, but our solar panels, which was uh, we were most concerned about, are okay. My husband is so glad I bought that thing, and so am I. So, mind you, for those of you that don't realize, it's not just about EMP and CME. It's so fast and powerful. It can actually withstand a direct hit from lightning, and it's so good that they actually back it up with a $25,000 warranty. Uh, so they will cover your damaged electronics if they're plugged in, if they um, get hit, if your house gets hit by directly from lightning. That's much different than all other surge protectors. Go read the label on any other surge protector you may have that's got lightning protection. It will not cover direct hit. It'll cover indirect hit down the street on a power line pole somewhere, not hitting your house. So 
um, yeah, it's a great testimony, uh, Erica Norton, and the fact that her husband is now uh, thrilled that this thing actually lived up to what it was. And by the way, if yours does get destroyed by lightning, they'll replace it for like $50, I think. It's pretty cheap. Yeah, and uh, as far as... But it, EMPs, it'll go through like 42 plus times and survive. That's, yeah. That's as many times they've tested. But lightning is so much more powerful. It's one and done, but it still protects. And, and we've had, and I, I don't know what, if it was like competitors over the la the first couple years that we, because we've affiliated with them a long time. There's a ton of Fugle family members uh, with tons of great feedback. And it's like, it was like over the first couple of years, there were these random people. And I, I felt like it was maybe competitors or something, somebody coming out. I, I didn't understand it, actually. But people were saying, oh, they don't work or whatever. This is military-tested uh, technology. This is Blackstone technology. EMP Shield itself has been contracted with DHS, DOD. Uh, this the, the, the thing is, is the more people that had this, I've talked about this many times. If everyone had this, if this was mandatory in every new house, we wouldn't have to worry about China or Russia. We wouldn't have to worry about North Korea EMPing us. If everything was protected, we would be totally fine. And by the way, the, the whole chatter right now, and this isn't coming from us, this is coming from all uh, in our community, is there's chatter about a certain deadline uh, by a certain date that the entire government and uh, everybody needs to be protected. So we're we're trying to find out. Basically, they're really tight-lipped right now. So that says something too. Um, all all of our affiliates and EMP Shield is working with all of these guys. So again, hopefully at some point we'll be able to get some uh, public kind of notification backing some of that up. There's a lot of really freaky chatter out there right now. It's it's definitely worth it. This is besides like an affiliate thing. Go through somebody else and get it. Go go through and do it without us. Uh, when you do go through us, you get fifty dollars off and you help our channel. But highly recommend you do it anyways. If you want to go through somebody else that does it, go ahead. Uh, but we recommend this because if everybody had this, we will be so much better off in general. So again, marfuglenews.com slash GMP. And then the Israeli attack that took the lives of aid workers consistent with multiple precision strikes, which that definitely uh, points a finger in a certain direction. The Israeli attack that killed seven aid workers from the nonprofit World Central Kitchen, or WCK, in the Strip on Monday appears to be consistent of multiple precision strikes. This is, of course, a CNN analysis of aftermath video and images. So take with a grain of salt. WCK said in a statement Tuesday that its team was traveling in a de-conflicted zone in two armored cars and one armored uh, unarmored vehicle after dropping off more than 100 tons of food supplies at a warehouse in Dera Habala in central Gaza. It says when the attack occurred, the charity said it had coordinated the convoy's movements with the uh, military. CNN geolocated video and imagery of all three destroyed vehicles and at least one of which was clearly marked with a WCK logo on its roof to two positions on the Strip's uh, Al Rashid Coastal Road and a third location on an off-road area with open ground nearby. The first location is about 2.4 kilometers from the third, indicating that the three vehicles were hit by separate strikes. So pointing to that this was some high-tech stuff that they were able to get boom, boom, and boom, and that this was some serious stuff, which has spurred side theories uh, all sorts of side theories, but you can get into those on your own over on Twitter. But it says the first vehicle, which appeared to have suffered extensive fire damage, was geolocated by Al-Rashid, just as said Dear Bob. The second car, which was fire damaged with a hole through the WCK marked roof, was located about 800 meters down the same road, and Al-Rashid Street is designated for the passage of humanitarian aid by Israeli authorities, according to the United Nations. So, with all this being said, they're essentially saying that this was some high-tech stuff. Uh, and again, they Benjamin Netanyahu uh, said that they took responsibility for the attack and that the Israeli forces had unintentionally struck innocent people in the Strip. Uh, this is the WCK marked one. It, you can see it's like straight through the roof. It, one thing I think is absolutely crazy, Dex, is how precision these are. 
Like, it, was there multiple people in the car, and were they, like, going after, like, the passenger? Or, like, and they say it was an accident and that they weren't trying to, but this is, like, crazy. What if this was, like, a president of another country or something? What if this was the Ayatollah in a different, you know, different kind of attack? That's crazy that the rest of the car is fine, and they did a strike so precision, it's like you can see the bottom of the front passenger seat. Yeah, yeah, that's insane. I mean, look how look when we look at this country or this I think this area of of land, the strip. Like, how many car owners are there? How many cars? I mean, I know they've got some vehicles, but I mean, it does seem pretty desolate at this point, especially after the phase they've gone through. So, um, and even this car, you could look on the roof. There's a giant logo on it. Like, there's not. Not to say that they couldn't see that from a plane. They may not be able to. I don't know. But if they can target it that well, you think they would have a visual on it too. So it's just, I, I don't want to say that they intentionally hit it because I don't. that doesn't sound right either. And they even said it was an accident. It's just very frustrating, I think, when you when you look at look at this and you see, you know, somebody like aid workers and you know there's got to be a lot, a lot of aid workers there. And probably the most of the vehicles that are running around are probably either bad guys or aid workers and um, and or people trying to move supplies in and around. So I think, uh, yeah, it's very unfortunate that it happened. And it's, you know, it, it, you know, feel sorry for the people who I mean, man, they were sacrificing a lot just to be there working, volunteering, let alone, you know, uh, losing their life this way. Well, I also I also think about the fact that CNN always gets these kinds of uh, exclusives. Now, this has been covered, but it's like, wh who is the base uh, news agency that everybody else kind of copy and paste these from? And I, I just, you know, you always wonder if there's some sort of other thing going on behind it, right? That there's, uh, but as far as like seeing that roof, I think that they ha can totally see that roof, but maybe at that time, maybe they were about to strike. They actually thought that they were using one of those vehicles for cover. I'm I'm surprised they didn't say that. Like, well, you know, they often use you know marked vehicles, or they can print out a heck in in Haiti, they can print out a a, a two foot by two foot picture of Putin and and screen print it onto flags for gosh sakes. Wonder what they could do uh, over there. But what do you guys? Great point. That's an absolutely great point, Adam. Right? It could have been. It could have been used for cover, and they could have thought it was the bad guys uh, faking out. I mean, because look, I, you know, they wouldn't do it, and they wouldn't have done it intentionally. Like that's not something, you know, Israel would do. Period. It just doesn't make sense. No, no country. Um, you know, I don't. You can't can't imagine any a modern country that would actually take an action like that, unless there was somebody they were trying to take out, and then typically they would explain that. Yeah, and I mean, you, when you uh, when you look at that uh, strike w through the roof, I mean, <laughs> how? The, I mean, that when they say precision, they're not kidding. You can literally. It, it, I think the the drivers is that the gas pedal or something, or is that a hole through the floor? You know what? Is that the hole from whatever small? I mean, like, was this a small munition that went through and then? How is that the ground? Is it, was that was that like a mortar thing that went through then blew up um facing up like if you look at the metal it, it's it's blown up out, right? So did the thing get did it go down in that hole? Like they're sitting they're driving, it goes whoosh, and then blows up backwards. Like is this a very specific way? I I'm more curious about weapons like this. This is insane. Uh, if, if the, I could see in like a movie, like the thing goes right between the guy's or woman's legs and you see it and goes and takes out just that person. That's precision. That's, it's scary that our governments have this and they're worried about our ARs. <laughs> they're worried about us having ARs, you, but yeah. Okay. They can take somebody out going 60 miles an hour. Uh, they can take off your shoes. Um, all right. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. 
And then a massive explosion has occurred uh, in Iran. And there's a lot of questions circulating. Uh, again, very, very crazy video coming out. And 30 minutes after this was out, I actually uh, I, I posted this, you know, just with the general question, like, this could be something very bad. A massive explosion has occurred within the last few minutes at an arms depot at the, uh, at the IRGC near the town of Rask in southeastern Iran, which is claimed to have been captured earlier by members of Sunni militant group Jaish al-Adi. You're seeing a lot of these other groups, too. Everybody's starting to get buzzing again. This, this tells me we're about to see a lot more events, and it's probably going to spread worldwide. I, I shouldn't say probably. I believe it's going to spread worldwide, whether orchestrated or legit. I think we're about to see more crazy events happening and news cycles are going to rotate for three days covering this attack, that attack, this event, that event. Um, in the next uh, six months here, we're going to see a, a bunch of that. That's what I, that's what I believe. Uh, but as far as this uh, explosion, this is from miles away, apparently. Boom. So... Um, uh, some of the responses, is a, let's see here, seems that there's going to be a regional war in the area one way or another. All I see is or three-letter agency op, says Verbania. Uh, yeah, so I mean, this a lot of people essentially questioning what the heck it actually was. Two hours ago, Tel Aviv, currently under heavy bombardment, flames are rising. A previous statement from Alyssa Kameni in a tweet mentioned, By God's will, we'll regret the crime of attacking the Iranian consulate in Damascus. That's actually quoting what we covered the other night. Yeah, it's so It's going down, folks. It is going down. So... Hopefully, uh, hopefully people are getting the fire to their feet and getting prepped. Uh, and then Dex, do you want to talk about the the debt danger ahead? It's kind of like, well, no duh, right? Yeah, if you look at, uh, you know, the they, what they did was they said they ran a million simulations, and one verdict: the U.S. economy is in uh, debt danger ahead. So if you just like look at a debt chart, and even this one's that's shown here is too short of a time period if you like rewound you know i don't know another 50 years before you'll see like our debt just gradually goes up a little a little a little a little a little a little and then when lehman happens it jumps and then uh you know we then we have the outbreak um in 2019 2020 and after then it's just like skyrocketing up it's just straight up and to the right um, and, and I know that's not a very steep curve, but when you make this chart look like it should over a much longer period of time, it looks ridiculous what's been going on with our debt. So the Congressional Budget Office warned in its latest projections that the U.S. Uh, government debt is on a path from 97% of GDP last year to 116% by 2034, higher even than in World War II. The outlook, uh, the actual outlook is likely even worse. So this is not um, not a good sign for economics. And it's, you know, it will, I don't know how we will deal with this. It just seems so un unfathomable to think that our government would actually do something smart, like stop spending so much money and stop throwing away so much money and actually run itself more efficiently and then start paying off this debt seems like all they want to do is just say, eh, we don't care about the debt. We'll just, you know, we'll, we'll raise it some more. We'll print some more money. We can spend, you know, $6,000 on a toilet seat and nine grand on a wrench. It doesn't matter. Buy a bunch of government. weapons for yeah. tax auditors. Like, yeah. Yeah. Or we can send a whole lot of money over to UKR more than, than we, you know, we do for, you know, anything around here. Um, that's not a problem. We've got all the money in the world. So that type of attitude uh, with our, our, our government, and it's on both sides. It's not to say one side is better than the other. They all like to spend. I, if that doesn't change and doesn't change dramatically soon, we're in for trouble. I mean, we're, we're really heading down, uh, 
you know, the edge of the road to a cliff. Where you don't pull in more money than your yearly debt and it just keeps going. That's a collapse. <laughs> that that's that's the financial that's the bleak end of the world for the u.s dollar uh scenario um yeah it's like fix ten thousand potholes or send an f-35 to a country we aren't actually allied with okay sure do the latter eh, screw it ah after this i'm gonna go to boeing eh. and then uh before we hey, go hey real quick adam sorry I saw a headline the other day that our interest payments alone on our debt are set to exceed our defense spending. Yeah. So just put that in perspective. We're going to spend that. more on interest on our debt than we're going to spend on our defense. That's insanity. That's it, people need to start waking up. Uh, by the way, make sure to go check out my Patriot supply, marfuglenews.com slash prep. Get yourself some freeze dried food three months at $200 off. It helps support our channel and it will get yourself prepped for any disaster. And that food lasts for 25 years. So again, once you get it, you don't have to worry about it for a few years. Uh, again, marfuglenews.com slash prep. Thank you, uh, everybody that joined us, including Grace for you too. Thank you for your support tonight. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. Thank you, thank you, and thank you over on D Live. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, CJ uh, Seven Nineteen Sixty Nine, Priscilla, Vicky K. Thank you. I believe you are the top supporter over on D Live. Vicky K. Beer Juice, Vicky uh, 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 Vitanos. Thank you so much for following. Uh, Chance, thank you for modding over there, and make sure to go check out MarfugalNews.com/slash/friends. Not only will you be able to find all of our great mods like Wages, Trinity, Ilea, RJL, Rip Curl, uh, who was here earlier tonight, Lisa R. Hall, uh, Jammer, Jam Jam, CJ Blaze, Chance, and Bones, you'll also find a whole list of great creators uh, right down below. So make sure to go check that out and go check out our full bibliography over at marfuglenews.com. Uh, Dex, thank you so much for your service tonight. Much love. Great job, brother. And if you joined us late, again, today's show show is uh, very compact. Uh, we, we did a two-hour interview today, so that will be airing uh, quite soon once it's edited. Um, and I'm sure you guys will see a familiar face. Um, and then if you have a suggestion for a guest you would like us to have on, uh, we now have, we're all set up for that, and we're, we're already in the process of recording them. So... Uh, suggest it in the comments down below. Would you like us to interview a creator or have them on the show or vice versa if you want to uh, suggest us for them? Let us know. Uh, Dex, thank you so much and appreciate everybody here. Appreciate the mods. Let's give a, uh, a big M in the chat. It's now time for the shoutro. It's not an shoutro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout out. It's a shoutro. Shoutro. <laughs> 